I've dedicated my life to this business and this industry and this off-road community. You know, I've dedicated to be the best that I can be, the best company that I be, the best product. This is all I do. In 1991, we started a communication business um, that we were building, you know, communications were heavy into aviation, and I dreamed of off-road. So I started making a bunch of off-road equipment. I started doing headsets for NASCAR, IndyCar, for everything. Then I remember when I developed the first intercom, because I wanted to revolutionize it. I saw was what was out in the off-road business, and I wanted to revolutionize it. And you know, I was dreaming, I'm gonna build racing communications equipment, and I'm gonna go race Baja. Because man, I was dreaming about it, and dreaming about it. So I go through and I build all this product, I start making all this product for everybody in the industry. So the company that we had before was Avcom and we were the factory building everything, all the private label equipment for everybody. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that, shoot, this is my 31st year in the communication business. I've been doing this a long time. I was behind the scenes for a long time and now Rugged is in the scene now. Being able to, to really be involved with the business and uh, see everything that goes into it, I just, uh, it's crazy. I have such a higher level of like respect for what my dad did for this industry. I didn't really understand until I got a first-hand uh, account into this this business, but uh, now I see it and I'm like, oh my gosh, this, he really is a legend of this industry and uh, everything is developed, but uh, with Rugged, it's a, it's a lifestyle. Rugged, we're the leader in two-way communications uh, in the off-road industry and in safety, security, fire, anything that uh, involves two-way radios, we're the leader. And the cool thing is uh, my dad put a lot of time and effort into this uh, this business and uh, a lot of people don't know he really developed a lot of the, the products you see on the market today. Like he is the, the mastermind behind it. But man, I was had the ability to work with my son and for the people that don't do that, it can be difficult and it can be the most rewarding. I have so much respect for him. I have respect for his knowledge. You know, one thing I've learned about this generation right now is they grew up in a different technology phase than we did. So I'm in this total learning phase, learning from my son and it's probably the greatest thing that's ever happened in my life right now. And to see him take my tradition and be in this off-road business and racing a class 11, and now him wanting to do it, I'm at the right age that now I'm, I'm really putting everything into perspective that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the very lucky people in, in this world that, that has a, uh, an insanely good back uh, to, to lean on if I need to. And uh, I just, I'm so lucky that my dad has given me this opportunity. And, uh, I used to think like, oh, the owner's son, it has a lot of pressure to it, but now I just, I gotta accept it because it's, it's so awesome. It just, it's the best because uh, of all the experiences and, and the, the memories we've been making over these past couple of years. Being a third generation racer now, like, it's pretty crazy. I mean, I see the, the pictures of my, my grandpa racing from Barcelona to Vegas and uh, my dad racing the thousand and, and hop in the car. I'm like, wow, like, like it's a little bit of pressure on me to, to, to perform. But uh, now it's it, just putting that in perspective. It's pretty insane that uh, I'm able to carry that on. And uh, I hope that I can have a fourth generation racer at some point too, but I'm, I'm just lucky to be the third generation and, and carry that that legacy from my dad and my grandpa. So that's pretty cool. And I gotta tell you, the Mint 400 was one of the most special times in my life. When you talk about a moment that's a defining moment that changes you forever, that was Mint 400 weekend. That's correct. All right, let's go. Let's have some fun today. So the Mint 400, what an amazing moment. Not just the race, not just the event, the moment of my son hopping in that car for the first time. 
I had Steve Burchard go over and get his seatbelts in, make sure he's comfortable. And everybody's asking me, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you nervous? And I'm like, no, let's go. I know what it's like to hop in that car. I know what it's like and I know what he's gonna go through. And man, the excitement level. I was just smiling, excited, and couldn't wait. Yeah, but that first off-road race that, uh, in the Class 11 car, and uh, uh, he went, uh, he didn't get to drive, and he was very disappointed he didn't get to drive. But uh, I think it's best that he didn't because he, he, he should start out in a pre-run and so forth uh, before you get out there and race. And you gotta do stuff like that and, and, and driving dune buggies and that sort uh, before you get out there and race. We strapped him in hooked up his hose, I looked inside, went into his helmet and I said, have a great time. Patted him on the back of the helmet and we shut the door and they left, you know? They left and I was like, man, I was just so excited for him to experience at that starting line when you drop the clutch. You drop the clutch, you smash the throttle and you're in the race. I've got goosebumps right now even thinking about it. Oh, holy shit. Are you kidding me? That was gnarly. Flag drops, they take off, and man, they did this big lawn dart. <laughs> and oh my god, bang! Robert misjudged that first jump. Stuffed it, dirt flies everywhere. You know, every everybody was around. I hear the announcers, I hear everybody. I'm like, okay, there's my boy, game on, let's go. Because in off-road racing, nothing's ever perfect. You may not have the perfect start, or you might have the perfect start. That's the beauty about off-road. It's not a groomed track. It's not something that is a perfect pavement that you know exactly where you're going and what you're doing, and you know every obstacle. This is off-road racing. Hit him! Hit him! That guy needs to start hitting him! We can't be stuck behind this guy in this wash! Hit him! Hit him! Good. Good. Okay. Straight down. Good. Yep. They got to the point that they're out of sight. And we're listening on the radio. Man, nine miles in, they're broke! Nine miles in, they're broke. And you know what? I was like, man, you know, they broke, fanned out broke, and I'm like, I was talking to Jaden before this. We are going over basic mechanics. He's a big, strong kid. Not always works on everything, but I just told him like, hey, listen, when you're in an off-road race, you never know what you're gonna be doing. You might be working on the car. You're co-driving. You're going over, if something happens to the driver, you gotta take over. If it's broken, you gotta figure it out. So I'm like, man, I mean, this thing is, off-road racing, it's no joke, okay? Because all your senses have to be put in place at one time. Your mechanical, your, your visual, everything that you do, you gotta use it right then. And they had to use it. So nine miles in, they throw a fan belt. They're stuck in the sand wash. They get a new fan belt on, they take off. Mile 10. On the radio again, they're stuck. Fan belt issues, they're stuck. They can't get out there in a really bad section. We can't send recovery, you know, so they're stuck in this area and we can't send recovery. For hours, they're sitting there. They're worried about the car getting hit and everything else. They're flagging people by, you know, and I said, man, because I told them, I said, listen, when you're on course, on live course, you gotta remain safe. And finally, we, uh, we got a Jeep speed because recovery couldn't get in. So we got a Jeep speed, said, hey, listen, when you go by, we're gonna hook a tow rope to you, throw it on the car, yank him out, cause you gotta get him going. So Jeep speed goes over, yanks him out, gets him up, they get to a good safe spot out of the sand wash. They work on the car, they car, get the car fixed. And this is after four hours. <laughs> this is the first four hours of the race, we're 10 miles. And I'm like, man, I was just smiling. You know, I, I was bummed that he only got that far in this, but they got going again. They figured it out, they got it going, and they took off. 
So we hear they're gonna go the first pit, I think mile 38. We take off in, the, uh, in our trucks, we get over to 38 to meet them. They come down the road, they come into the pits. We're talking, we're going over stuff. The torsions were too soft. We're cranking up the torsions, making sure the fan belt is right. We're getting them all going, are you good? He said, yeah, dad, the most fun in four hours I've ever had in my life. Let's go. So you know what? They took off. And man, I was just like, okay, the race is on. They're at mile 38, let's go. We got the call, mile 45. Something happened to the car, they're stuck again, and they got hit by a truck. <laughs> they got hit by a truck pretty hard. They're in the middle of the race course. And you know what? It, what was so great is he told me what he was doing to stay safe. And I'm like, man, I'm just, once again, I'm so proud because he's got such a great head on his shoulders. And uh, so mile 45, they're stuck, they got hit. I think they got hit again. The car got hit a few times. And um, it was just in a bad spot. And things happen. So finally they said, hey, car's not operable anymore. Race is done. So guess what? He's another four hours out there before we can get recovery out there. So you know what? His day was eight hours of off-road racing. Okay, quite a few hours of sitting, quite a few hours of figuring out how to get the car running, get it unstuck, stay safe. He got to experience everything in off-road in eight hours. So recovery gets him over to us. We meet him over at the spot. We get the uh, truck and trailer. We're loading the car, the trailer. It's beat up pretty bad. First thing he says, Dad, I want to do this again. Ah, oh, man. You know what? To think about this, as a father, it was an amazing defining moment for my family that I will remember forever. Because now I'm passing the torch. He's like, I want to get in another car. I want to get in a UTV. I want to race a class 11. I cannot wait to hop back in the car. I mean, I think about it every day. I'm like, damn. I can't wait for the next event. I can't wait to go. I just can't wait to do it. For me, it's just like it was an immediate rush and I just knew that this is something I want to continue doing, and a lot of it. Um, I'm going to have him start driving a class 11 around here, back and forth to work every day to acclimate to that car. So he knows it inside and out. Yeah, he enjoyed it a lot and wants to do more of it. And I think he would do pretty good at that because he's a guy that, like his dad, thinks about things. I was so proud of my son because he wanted to do this. He wanted to follow in my footsteps and, and think about this and the stories of grandpa telling him about race in Baja and me telling him about race in Baja. And now he's in a class 11, a natural progression. 